Hi everyone, good morning. Still awake? <laughs> There's a, I think, so much that we learned already the last two days. It's been extremely inspiring for me. I hope you also had the same. And I'm really excited to talk through this very exciting topic, uh, what's coming up in uh, 2017 and beyond, and how we will be able to see email marketing evolving. What are the great changes that are going to come up? Uh, but first of all, I would like to welcome the panelists, and uh, it would be great if you could introduce yourself and, and what you do and uh, about your organization. Okay, hi. Shall I go first? Yeah. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, oh, sorry, I'll speak quietly. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, Live Clicker, um, you, you kind of know who I am, but Live Clicker is um, based in California, Silicon Valley, started in 2008. Um, and um, I initially started working with them four years ago um, on the east coast of the US, helped building out the business there and then came here to Europe three years ago and I've had the privilege of working and with some amazing clients. Essentially, we are um, a real-time email platform, which means the ability to get live content into all of your campaigns every time they're open. So one of the key words to think about with Live Clicker is it all happens at the moment of open. So it doesn't matter when somebody opens an email, the content is always going to be fresh, it's always going to be live, and hopefully entertaining as well. We work with some great brands across uh, every sector, um, and even sectors within sectors. Um, privileged to work with uh, my favorite football team, Chelsea. <laughs> one of the best, actually, really one of the best teams. Um, at, well, the, the reason I love working with them is they, sorry, email teams. And one of the reasons I love working with them um, is because they've got so many ad adventurous plans and um, it's great fun to be part of that. And they also won the Premier League. And we also work with Arsenal, they won the FA Cup, so we've got to be <laughs> both So anyway, that's, um, yeah, I'm based in London. Hi. Uh, so for the, uh, those of you who haven't met me, my name's Robin. I work at Secret Escapes, and I basically run the technical <laughs> side of marketing, um, specialising in like data and infrastructure. Um, so Secret Escapes has been going for seven years now. Um, we're a boutique hotel supplier. Um, we work in and currently working in about twenty territories. Um, we're very different to what you would probably expect, where we're not a booking.com, we're not a Expedia, so we work on this weird mix of uh, what we call discretionary travel. Um, so you can't really come to our site knowing what you want. So a lot of our challenges are around inspiration and then followed by determination to actually you know, finish the deal. Hi, uh, I'm Anthony White. Uh, I work for Live Intent. Um, Live Intent is a programmatic uh, platform uh, pin based uh, with email and the email address at its heart. Um, I've been with the company since October 2014 to help set up the, the UK office. Uh, Live Intent has been around since 2011. Uh, we currently work with over 2,000 publishers and brands, uh, mostly in the US and the UK. Great, so welcome and thank you for participating. So this panel is really about the future, or the future is here hopefully, uh, and um, how I wanted to introduce this panel a little bit more uh, was looking into what everybody uh, is really interested in. E-consultancy just did, uh, for example, as, uh, as one of the examples, uh, a survey asking marketeers what would be their prediction for the next five years that's changing in the email marketing world. And there were four things that were really popping out um, from that uh, from that survey, one of them was data. I think we all recognize that from the previous two days. The second one was uh, personalization. Again, I think it's a no a no brainer. Uh, content and then automation. So I'm really really curious on uh, how this is going to evolve through all of you and uh, and through the panelists. So the first question I would ask regarding the next big changes that are going to happen in, in 2017. What would be your prediction that, uh, that change in email marketing? Yes? Okay, I'll go first. Well, I agree with all those four, of course, um, but I want to add another one. Um, summed up as fun. Um, I think email needs to become fun again. Um, 
and one of the things we I, I get, <laughs> just like last night. Um, <laughs> but I, I think it needs to become fun, and I think it will become more fun, and I think the tools are available for that to happen. So, I think as an industry, marketing industry in general, we actually need to fall in love in a way with with email again and. Hopefully the people who are opening the emails going forward will also love you know, what we're presenting to them. Um, and I think probably one of, if I had to choose one of those four that you mentioned, um, I would say deeper personalization is the way to, to, to achieve that. So just off the top of my crystal ball, that's what I would say. Great. Robin? Um, so I think it's been mentioned a few times in the past couple of days, but I think the big change is all going to be around how uh, teams sort of start to work together and prioritize things. So we've had these great tools for the past few years, we've been really spoiled with ESPs and content tools all coming together um, and basically allowing almost anyone to go out and create a great campaign. And then we're now starting to ask the question which is like, when, is, when should we be creating the campaign and when should we not be creating the campaign? Um, so anyone who works in silos, I'm sure, has this uh, slight thing about you've suddenly turned around and you've been working on a campaign for a week and suddenly you turn around and someone has beaten you to it by a day. And it's like, oh, well, we, I mean, we probably should have done that together. Um, I also want to kind of uh, expand on your point, which is not only fall in love, um, I think we need to fall in geeky love. Um, I think that's going to be more and more. I think you're going to get more developers in. Um, who are going to be doing it for the pure uh, love of what is suddenly possible that wasn't possible five years ago. Great, thank you. Um, yeah, so data and fun seems to be the <laughs> themes, um, or as my New York colleagues would probably describe it, uh, sexy, uh, which, which I can't quite get my head around. It. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so on the, on the data side, you know, we, um, for, for the last 40 years or so, email's been very much about sending and receiving uh, email um, and I think that um, you know this year and moving forward uh, email or more specifically the email address is going to become increasingly important in uh, not only what you guys do on a daily basis but what your marketing teams more broadly do uh, on a day daily basis. Um, the industry is moving far more towards uh, what we call people-based marketing uh, as opposed to cookie-based marketing. Uh, and in order for that to happen, um, marketing teams need a, uh, a central identifier that they can, they can create these identity uh, personas around, or these you know, individual customer identities. Um, and the email address um, is, is, is currently seen as the, sort of the, the go-to piece of data uh, for that to happen because it's unique. Um, it's tied to, to a, a real human. Um, it connects devices, um, and um, so given that, um, we feel that the email address is going to become more important. So therefore, the, the things that you know, the, the bit of data that all you control, um, is is going to become increasingly relevant for for marketing moving forward. So I would have a question to you, Robin. Um, I think we all agree that we try to, as marketeers, aim for sending messages at the right time to the right consumer uh, and then capture their attention uh, a much better way. What would be your take on this and what's your, um, what's your North Star how you, and how you would like to get there in this, uh, in this point of view? Um, so I'm just, we just had a great presentation all about that. Um, but in my industry, that's only half the message. Um, so email represents about 70% of all our traffic. So if we just sat back and were constantly waiting for someone to give us a sign, we wouldn't be sending much. Um, so we have this, have this, this secondary point about um, actually you have to find ways to collect data. And that kind of puts a twist on the right message, right time, when you don't have, you don't have the time arm to play with. So suddenly it's all about how do you make the message always work for the user? So we are never gonna stop sending every day, because every time we do, we make less money, we make less, our users are gauged much, Della loves me as a case study. Um, so it's all about using the right tools, so we use a, a company called Jetlaw, who 
who is uh, uh, based in America. And they're a great um, personalization uh, tool for us. And we started using them about 18 months ago. And it's lots of, it's actually finding great ways to sort of turn all that data in, on the head. So they started as a personalization tool. Um, we're now turning them the, the thing backwards by going, instead of, I have a user, here are the products. We have a limited inventory, so we suddenly have this ability to go, actually, this is, I have this product, and what I actually need is an audience for it, who is gonna, so I'm gonna start that funnel. We're using a recommendation engine, but for a user outcome. And it's, it seems to be working great for us. Great. So, if we talk about already tools, as, uh, as you mentioned, um, what would be your opinion, uh, Dave, and what do you think would be uh, the most important tools that are coming up uh, in this year or beyond? Yeah, yeah. So any tool that can repurpose data and make it personal and make it um, relevant uh, at every time that somebody opens an email, I think that, that's definitely the way to go. I mean, um, for example, sort of simple things. Anybody here used a countdown timer in a campaign at all? Yeah. Um, yeah, okay, so that's basic. And, and weather, anybody use weather to target? Yeah, one, two, yeah. So they're already out there, or, or available. I mean, so that's. Um, but where, where I think it's going is um, data is a big issue. Um, we've heard so much about it. There are too much data. We don't, the more, more we own, the, the less we know about the individual, and so on. And how to, how to use that. So any tool that's going to make that easy that whole process easy, whether you build it in-house or whether you use third-party tools, I think it is the way to go. So at, at LiveClicker, we kind of summarize data into four silos, just really quickly. So there's preference data, which is what they've told you, uh, which we've, we've talked about. There is the behavioral data, which you've learned from their behavior on the website, which is also going to inform how you can personalize something. But then the, the two least used um, accesses to data that, that um, a lot of brands are now realizing are, are really powerful is the moment of open data. So if you have very little knowledge, so Della's sleeper bit of um, your prospect list now, as we call them, those pos positive people who you've got their emails but you can't get them engaged. So once you use some kind of automation or you've got some subject titles that <coughs> will, will trigger the, that open, once you've got that open, there's so many things you can discover, the device they're on, the location, um, you can, and off the back of that you can work out the weather, you can work out the time of day, the day of the week. So if you've got um, no data on that individual, you've suddenly now got you know, a ton of really quite useful data. And then there's the last silo which we call um, uh, industry critical um, data or product critical data. So um, stock that's going in and out of stock offers, holiday offers that are coming in and out of availability, wh whatever that might be. Um, the ability to feed that data into the so some kind of combination of, of those four in an easy process has, has got to be because none of us have got big teams um, unless I, you're ING <laughs> but um, um, most of us don't have big teams so in any platform that's going to facilitate that Thank you. Anthony, what would be your take on uh, tools for 2017? Um, I, I think that the, the big tool that's coming up are, uh, is identity graphs, or are identity graphs. Um, a lot of people are, are talking talking about them. There, there are quite a few uh, available, but um, identity graph will enable you to, to capture multiple different data points and, and again, attach it to, a, to an individual uh, person. Um, so people, are, up until now, it's the the, the big two, Google and Facebook, have dominated people-based marketing, but as I'm sure a lot of you know, you don't get a huge amount of data back when you work with, with those guys. Um, so when, you're, when, you're, uh, when you've when you created either your own or with, with someone else uh, an, an identity graph, um, that allows you to, to do uh, people-based marketing in channels um, where you actually get some data back. Um, and so, so basically that will enable um, email marketers specifically uh, to start using the CRM strategies and tactics that you, you currently use in your own media, um, but in um, channels that previously have been um, reserved for advertising. We, we make a, quite a big difference between sort of advertising and marketing. Um, so advertising is when you're prospecting the unknown, whereas marketing is when you're having a one-to-one a, a -one relationship with, with someone you know. Um, and, and so identity graphs um, will, will become you know, a, a lot more 
a lot more common. Um, there was a couple of months ago um, a consortium led by Axiom and AppNexus um, have, uh, have um, started. Uh, it's called. It's, it's like a sort of it's an identity consortium. So they're, they're creating uh, like an industry-wide standard for what um, people-based identity looks like. Uh, again, it's all centered around the email address, so, so that's something that if, uh, if you haven't um, looked at or looked into, it's, it's, it's well, worth, well worth a read. Great. So yeah. there have been quite some discussions around, for example, machine learning, um, and uh, I think everybody's very excited about that. Robin, I'm, I'm interested in what you think about this as a, um, as a brand and how um, you would potentially use it or have you used it before and what, uh, do you have maybe any examples that, uh, that would help us understand uh, how it works or, or where you would like to get to? Um, so the, yeah, so the company I mentioned earlier, Jetlaw, is a, basically a machine learning uh, recommendation engine. Um, uh, Founded by the guy, one of the guys who worked on the uh, the Google search stuff. So it's um, I'm a self-confessed geek, and even uh, I sometimes walk into meetings with him and just come out and go. Uh? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, I, it is definitely the future. Um, I think it's going to lead to a, um, a change in uh, the kind of next generation of uh, startups in our industry. I think. There's going to be much, so we're going through the machine learning, we're going through the content phase, and I think it's the only thing left that will really, is really holding back machine learning at the moment is the reporting, because it's still a bit scary for you to send out a campaign and never quite know what's in it, um, and just hope for the best, and you, the only way you can sort of justify yourself, that to yourself, and more importantly to your boss, is by having all the results of all the subscribe level having that identity model that you can go back to and be constantly demonstrating that this thing is moving forward. It's not just going to be a 10% lift and then it's just slowly decay on you. Um, I'm very excited about it and uh, we're going to keep any chance that we get to test it, we definitely will. Great, so a huge opportunity there. Are there any, or would you like to... Yeah, robots that? are going to take over. We're all going to be out of the job. <laughs> Um, they will speak as well. I have a dream. Yeah, the dream is this: there's this machine. It looks a bit like a fruit machine outside, and you feed all your content into it. You feed all your contacts into it. You feed all your offers, and then you pull the lever, and then it just makes tons of money for you. Um, so if that's the future, uh, obviously I jest, but um, certainly automation, machine learning. I mean, Frozy do subject titles. Victoria's here somewhere. If you haven't chatted to Victoria, you should. Um, they're doing some great stuff. Um, Live clicker does some small bits of automation already, sort of um, automated A/B split testing using an algorithm um, and stuff. So everywhere there's bits of this happening, and I think it, it's only a matter of time, uh, as, as Robert was saying, you know, it's, it's going to converge, and a lot of the take the guesswork, I guess, out of, of what we're doing, and, and obviously it's going to take quite a bit of time before we trust it. Um, I've got a car recently that's got adaptive cruise control, you know, you, you press a button and it measures the distance to the car in front and it brakes without you touching the brake. Can we very few took me a whole day not to have my foot on it. Um, and I think it's the same, you know, we, we're going to come to the point where we can, we can trust that not only to do subject lines but to also decide, you know, what are the best offers to offer and what are the, um, the best campaigns to, to give to a particular um, and for that to be perpetual, so as Robin was saying, the, the, the days of um, we do something on a Monday and then we follow it up on a Wednesday afternoon, I, I think that is going to pass really quickly. Mm. That's one of the first things that's going to go from our agenda. So is there a brand or is there an example that is already here from the future? I mean, are we living in the future from one perspective already now? Would you would you have any examples, any brands that already all, all do these this? brands here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to be slightly controversial and say the opposite. Um, so we've heard great things, and everyone in this room, I'm sure, is doing great things. Uh, we've got Mike came up on Amazon, has obviously mm. put up the poster child, and then you've got um, Airbnb and Uber all doing these great things. Um, but the kind of 
sad truth is that the people who are really living the future are just the company you haven't heard of yet. They're just three guys in a room slightly who are uh, basically just probably not even left university, um, but are going to be um, make us all jealous with their mansions in about five years' time. <laughs> probably has. <laughs> I can see that happening too. Do you have uh, anything to add, Evan? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll try and bring it slightly closer to to <laughs> pre present day. But um, yeah, we you know we we're, we're working with a big uh, financial institution, and they and they're using a combination of um, an identity graph that we've built for them, plus their own CRM data, to create like an affiliate marketplace um, for their their partners. Um, so the combination of of their own data, or first, second, and third party data. Uh, they're using um, plus uh, the identity graph allows them to create uh, to um, pinpoint or together pinpoint offers for their partners to very very specific groups of, of, of people. Um, so the sort of the the brand, if you like, are becoming are becoming their own little marketplace, and that's giving them a, a revenue stream they've they've never had before, which is um, very, very exciting for for them. So. Um if there would be one witty, quirky, weird thing, weird uh, prediction of 2017, what would be um, what would be your prediction, Dave? Does it have to be witty? <laughs> Doesn't have to be witty. Um, an, an app that measures how much fun you had last night. <laughs> <laughs> we and, need that. And wakes you up in the morning. Robin, what do you think? Um, so, I mean, just following on, um, geeks are going to slowly take over. <laughs> um, because no matter how well you build a platform, a tool, a machine learning algorithm, there's going to be someone who's going to come along and play with it and just find ways to um, make it do what it was never designed to. <laughs> Great. Anthony, what do you think? Yeah, following following on from that, I mean, I I think geeks. I, I sort of referring to CRM people as geeks, but sorry about that. But but geeks. Um, yeah. Um, we. I I think there's going to be um, the silo or the silos of media and CRM are, are going to going to break down, um, and so so it's going to become far more one one team, and so that the. the um, the CRM team that have all the, the data and have all the intelligence about how to use that data effectively um, are going to have access to the, the, the media budgets and the technology the media teams have, have been using for, for you know, the last five to ten years and vice versa the media teams are going to have access to a lot more first party data to in, inform their, 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 their media buying decisions and marketing decisions um, um, more effectively so basically we're going to be one big happy family with media and CRM coexisting uh, in perfect harmony. That's my <laughs> <laughs> Great. So with that, we'd like to also open up to asking the audience if they have any questions uh, or if you, they have anything to add as well. So having a conversation would be really great. I'm curious what you guys think of GDPR, what kind of influence that will have on innovation. Great question. Um, it's... it's Still, a bit early to say, as we as we saw on on Monday, was it Monday? It feels like a lifetime ago. Um, there's there's the, uh, the the legislation, but I think there's still a lot of room for that legislation to be interpreted, and and I think a lot of people are still waiting for uh, the additional guidance that's going to come out between now and, and next year um, to help inform how how marketers um, use that. I mean, you know, from 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 our perspective, we think it's a it's it's a great thing. Anything that that uh, improves um, the, the the trust that consumers have with marketing uh, and protects data is is great in our eyes. Um, so so yeah, we're we're fully on board with it. Um, but I think there's going to be there will be a period of transition. Uh, as people understand, you know what the actual implications are. A bit similar to the when the cookie laws changed, uh, albeit with slightly bigger fines. Um, yeah, I'll just echo that. I think long term, nothing will change. Um, we don't do what we do because we take great joy about you know uh, sending emails out to people who don't care. We are in the position where we we are in because consumers love 
generally love what we do. They actually want their message to be seamless across everything. They want to have everything easily accessible at the touch of a button, and that is only possible with the kind of data integration and sharing that we currently have. There are a couple of questions here. Yeah. Let's, uh, you first, and then let's yeah. know who you are. Yeah. Hello, Eric from Berlin Sports. It's a question for all of you guys. Um, um, looking out uh, the future, um, do you think it will be feasible business where uh, users are being paid for they uh, to give the data away to like an, a kind of a, a bank account with your with your data, so this man can exp um, you know um, work with your data and. And monetize it. So you're talking about like a sort of a one-to-one -one DMP when you're your own. Yeah, I mean, uh, I know there is a guy who, who will, will um, use my data to to get profit from from brands, and uh, maybe I'm I'm happy to give him my my email address, my my complete profile for for a certain amount of money. Um, and yeah, do you think that would be feasible in the future? I think it's sort of happening at a, at a low level in terms of when, when you know you're, you incentivize people to give you their email address, for example, whether that's with a discount or with, with yeah. um, some, some other you know, form of information or benefit. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, uh, um, I haven't seen the, the tools that will enable that, but um, I see it you know, perfectly possible and, and likely that happens, but I don't know, you know, when, um, I think there would need to be a sort of a, a shift in, I think the consumer would need to understand more about how their data is currently being used in order to work out what they have to trade um, and, and, you know, what they should expect in return, but, yeah, theoretically, I think mm -hmm. that's perfectly possible. Just, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there's a deeper principle, though, um, that buying data like that um, just potentially just encourages what I call short-term value mm. over long-term value, so that data is only valuable to a brand really ultimately if you can get long-term value out of that, that individual, and that would be the yardstick that I, as a brand that I would use. Um, is it going to give me long-term value, or is it just, uh, am I just counting the number of opens for the sake of it? And I would also add, mm. just to add to that, um, not that I'm a panelist here, but in my opinion, it also depends on the brand. Uh, how, when, whether this is a, the right solution for them, because they might not uh, be, I mean, these leads might not be valuable enough for them to, to invest in, um, or they might go for different uh, acquisition options to, to have long -term, longer term relationships with, the, with their consumers. So, in my opinion, that's also very important to take into account what the brands want uh, and how they would like to have keep these uh, consumers in the long term. Question? Um, thanks guys, great panel this morning. Um, first off, yeah, I do agree there needs to be more fun in email. Um, I think that <laughs> brings us back to the old days. And second, Robin, uh, definitely geek power. I think it's definitely geek time without a shadow of a doubt. Um, so my question is, is, it is related to MoveLink and you know, our passion for uh, automated personalization. <coughs> but we keep seeing these reports year in, year out about you know, it's one of the top priorities, three months after is every year has been more personalized and drive personalization. Yet we only see a small number of personalised campaigns. Why is that? Um, yeah, so um, Mivra Lincoln like are play in the same space. In fact, I noticed my badge was actually Live Clicker Inc. <laughs> <laughs> That's because you want to be Dave. Come on, come on. <laughs> Just can't spell. <laughs> um, it's not easy. I think. I think you're absolutely right, Sean. I think. I don't think it's easy. I think. Um, is, is there anybody who would immediately put their hand up and say that, that deep level personalization successfully delivering great results is easy? No, so they, there's the answer. Um, so I know that you guys and LifeClick are, are working really hard to try and resolve that. Um, and I think uh, a lot of it has to do with um, the, the sort of work that ING are doing. I'm really impressed by, by, by that campaign. So the ability to, to care not, not only about um, utilizing the right data to get personalization happening, but also, as, as Amazon said, working backwards from the individual. What, what is going to motivate that individual? What data is actually going to trigger them? And we were talking in our little round table yesterday um, about different brands that are feeding cruises. 
did one recently that had seven levels of personalization. Just really brief. So not only was it salutation, the greeting underneath the salutation was personalized based on the relationship with the brand. Uh, they gave facts on how many cruises they'd been on, how many uh, meals they'd eaten, what was their last cabin, what was the last destination, and of course at the end of the email, so where are we going next? Um, that's the only time, Celebrity Cruises told us, the only time in their entire history people emailed them back and said that was the best email anybody's ever sent me. So, so it works, but is it easy at the moment? No, not, not particularly, but I think so in the future that is going to be one of the key learnings to, to try and make that, that easy. Um, so yeah, I think it's, it's often just the, the sheer dauntingness of starting, which is like, um, you always go, you go to these conferences and you see um, great, I mean, clients of yours, I think, uh, the Virgin Holidays and doing these great things, and then you kind of, you get back and go, well, I mean, I don't even know in, who in IT I need to talk to. Um, and then you, you know, you try, you go for like a first name personalization thing, and when you trial things like that, which are just so completely random compared to everything, and you're like, oh, this is really gonna, it's gonna blow the doors off, and it's like, oh, I mean, it didn't know. <laughs> um, because, and it has to be, it just has to be a slow, steady, so I imagine it's going to be for at least another couple of years that same piece. Um, uh, I think it will it will slowly inch by inch get there. Did you have a, qu a question here from Alex? Uh, yeah. So first off, Robin, uh, keep plugging away. <laughs> um, my my um, uh, so I actually don't even have a question. I just wanted to swing back to the data point because um, Eric's question uh, to Anthony, uh, Anthony, you're spot on because a company does actually already exist called Data Wallet that is already um, acting as a broker. Um, so you're able to just go there and, and essentially sell your personal data to third parties. So business model is already in place and, and functioning. So I just thought I'd share that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just behind the times. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, your new business has um, been taken on the side. Are there any other questions from the audience or comments? Okay, no, thank, thank you, you very much. Yeah, well done, thanks.